Jean Philippe doesn't like the forms module as it is right now by default. Uh, yeah, so it's it was mostly to handle uh, the request uh, with JavaScript, so Ajaxify them. Uh, so initially, I went the route with uh, Bootstrap and the built-in .NET um, unobtrusive validation. Uh, but midway, we I decided to try out the view. Viewify, uh, Vue.js, and uh, vValidate, uh, which are three client-side libraries. Um, and they worked really well. So right now the module is kind of like in the early days, so there's still a lot of code to be written on the admin side, but at least it works and we can start playing around with the forms to see what's possible and what's not possible. Can you zoom in? Um, uh, sorry? Can you zoom the screen? Oh, Zoom. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I also wanted to ask. You can just share your your window. I'll show the window. Yeah, I have a wide monitor. Um, so wait. Okay, let's share a window. This one. Is this better? Yes, much better. Thank it's you. There, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So. Let's get into it. So this module basically creates a content type uh, called view form and allows you to create what I call view forms. And the difference between the forms modules and this is that it's like using client side validation. It's integrated with Vue.js, vValidate and Vueify, as I mentioned earlier. So for this demo, I ran the blog uh, setup recipe and um, yeah, so and set up uh, the module. So build the contact form. Uh, this is what it looks like here. Um, so I added it in a layer. I'll show you how just in a second. So, okay, go back to it. So I'll show you how it, how it works. So title, this is just for the admin, the form enabled or disabled. Uh, if it's disabled, you can show this text. Uh, this was just to allow us to like create the form in the back and no one can access it in the front end. Um, a success message. So when the form is uh, successful, uh, the validation, the server-side validation pass, you'll get this message. Or if it doesn't, you can display this message. Um, there's a client init script. So this is actually client-side JavaScript where you can set up options for vValidate, uh, view, or Vueify, as you can see here. So you can set client-side options here. So this this was to give flexibility to see what, what would be required. Um, in this case, we use it to localize the vValidate fields uh, validations. So as you can see here, the required message is coming from our localized uh, liquid filter. Um, the on validation is a server-side script. So this is using Jint or the server-side, uh, the Orchard Core scripting. Uh, where you can see you can get the form data and then you can perform client-side validation here. So this is what I meant by it's not complete yet. So my end goal is to have widgets and the validation would be defined inside the widgets so we wouldn't have to duplicate it here. And the widget would generate the client-side and server-side validation uh, together. So right now it's kind of like early days, so I still require on validation for server-side validation. Um, I added this method that allows you to add the error and it's going to be mapped to the input on the client side. Uh, on submitted, this is where you would like perform actions after validation. So let's say validation passes, there's no errors added, then this script gets called. So this is where I typically would create a content item or perform something. You can even do a, a redirect. So this is a little global method I wrote as well. Um, yeah, so that's how it works. Uh, for localization, uh, I built this part. I'm not too sure about it yet, but this basically uh, puts all the text inside of one content item. So since I didn't want to duplicate these scripts uh, across two items uh, by using the localization part, um, I decided to create this, this little um, helper that allows you to create key and culture pairs. So basically like you, you add, you can add as many as you want, and you can reference them 
in a script like this. So you get the localized text for the current culture. So localized text.name required error will be for the current culture, uh, current request culture, sorry. And in liquid, you can also reference it like this. Um, yeah, so that's what these are for. Um, since we didn't have a lot of languages, this made sense for us, so, but I'm not sure it would make sense for a site that has like many, many languages. It might become a bit bloated, but for us, it, it worked. Um, and then you can see here, there's a view component widget, which is the one that I initially built to as a proof of concept, but it works pretty well. So it's basically code. Um, so you're writing your, it's a Vue.js component. So you have a template and you also have a script. So the script is a typical Vue.js component script. For this case, uh, I just needed the data, uh, but you can have computed fields, etc. cetera. Um, this, the template is here. And as you can see, we're using the vValidation validation provider. And this is how you specify it. Like uh, you map the errors here with the, the view slots. Uh, the rules here, um, I removed it actually. Initially it was required and this was like air email as well. But I removed it just to show the server side validation. Um, this has liquid support. So it's kind of weird because Vue.js uses uh, double squigglies for um, a mustache syntax, I guess, uh, for templated strings. And we we use liquid server side to uh, uh, display the labels. So when you want to actually display the Vue.js, you, you need to use the raw uh, block. So this like will this will be client side um success message and client side error message um, we have a bit of documentation as well so you can see this is actually injected by the top level view app component if you will and it it resolves to these two so we have documentation as to what's available uh, another one is form handle submit is available and there's also you can write something like disabled equals uh, form submitting. So this will be set to true when the form is currently submitting and set to false if there's a successor error handled in the Ajax call. Um, we also, so I'll just publish this guy, and we also have a workflow integration. So uh, as you can see here, I was testing earlier. So I created an event, it's a, uh, it's when the form is submitted and you can select which form. So you can have one workflow for many forms. So if you had multiple forms, they would show up here and you can check them off. And this allows you to, for example, send an email or do more advanced stuff. Uh, what I found though, is that in most cases or some of the cases where I didn't want to have a workflow, the script was enough uh, for like a lot of Case, uh, use cases that I have. So I was okay with just using this to create a content item. And uh, yeah, so uh, this form, I displayed it in the uh, widgets right here. So I added a, a widget. This widget has a content picker that allows us to pick that form and is displayed always. So if you go to the home page of the blog, you'll see at the bottom that your form is here. So if you try to send, you see the client side validation is triggered. So I'll leave, I'll just put something invalid here. So John, and then this is a message. And I'm gonna send it to the server side. And this is the server side validation. And as you can see, uh, this message is coming from, um, is coming from the definitions that we had in the form here, up here. Please correct the errors above and it's displayed like this. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fix it, uh, GP, whatever, and send it. Okay, so your contact request was successfully received. Um, so if you remember here, we're creating a content item. So I'm just gonna go double check that it's actually created. So you can see contact request is there. There we go. So the contact request is there. And we were also sending an email. 
Uh, so I'm going to go just check to see if it got put into my email. So it's right here. Uh, whoops. I'm just going to open this with Notepad just to show. So the email, the message is there. That all works. Uh, you can also make a redirect like this. So you could technically do an HTTP redirect here, or you can also do it in the submitted, uh, as I shown earlier. Um, I think that's it. So if I just send this again, yeah, see now the redirect happened from the workflow. And you can also do it from the, whoops, I was right there, sorry, from here as well. So since we're creating content item, you can also redirect to the content item uh, with its ID. So I'm going to do this. I uh, might have to go and undo the one in the workflow because it happens after. There we go. And again, okay. There you go. So it, this is displaying the content item. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned before, uh, right now it's it's a bit verbose as to what you have to write in here, but my goal is to use this and kind of like get a feel for how we use it and what's required as, uh, what, what requirements do, are we getting back from our users? And then we will like make widgets out of the fields, for example, and automatically uh, map the validation like this. Uh, like the validations here and the, your error message on the client side, etc. Um, yeah, that, that's my first thought. Why isn't it a set of custom widgets for yeah. the current forms module? For the current forms module? It, it's all about the um, client side validation and server side validation um, and allowing a script. Okay, so validation what, on submit. It's funny because everything we are seeing here is just made by SIPK forms module, the, the workflows. Um, so the, what is the forms module? The forms module is just, what is just, it's, um, is it, what, what is the forms module based on? The flow part uh, yeah. with, with, the, with the form content type. So. Today we have a form content type and other kinds of uh, widgets, form widgets, mm -hmm. that work with the current form content type. But what if you just have a, and, and but you're not doing the same thing here. You have a view forms. Well, you have the same thing, right? Right? You can put some some custom widgets inside. I saw that. Uh, yeah, right here. So this is also a form, uh, a flow. Sorry. Yeah, the same thing. Okay. It's a flow. Uh, the only difference yeah. is that it injects, uh, it handles the, the JavaScript, the client yeah. side validation. Yeah, so I'm wondering. Let, yeah, so the, these could also be custom widgets or custom properties of a form widget. It could be. Yeah, yes. we could, you could. Um, so what would be interesting would be to have different sets of form widgets then. Like okay. the one the one we have today, which is completely server side for simple usage. And maybe there is a view set of form components. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, and you could still have, have everything in terms of widget, but but you said that's what you want to go to. Like have each element as a different widget and you can configure them with custom view JS or custom JavaScript properties and uh, non-intrusive uh, validation and so on. So yeah. Yeah. So basically this is all doable with the forms modules like an enhancement on top. Um, but m the big thing for me was to have it s a separate. So the view forms are all here and you reference them sure. uh, via uh, the word the widget there that i showed earlier uh, because there was a lot of cases where we wanted to have multiple uh, display the same form in multiple places um and that was a bit harder with the the built-in one since it was a widget and with localization as well when you had the localization part you had a duplicate of the forms whereas this is just one 
So yeah, I don't know. I there was component could handle yeah. that this way also. We don't have to use the full localization for that once we have the dynamic because what you are implementing is um, the beginning of the dynamic localization that we have designed and Isham already started to work on. Yeah. Uh, like this part. Okay, here. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, this part should be the dynamic localization thing. Okay, thanks.